Despite decades of effort, cancer still remains one of the most deadly and widespread diseases in the world. It's estimated that half of us will suffer its effects at some point in our lives. The Francis Crick Institute is the biggest biomedical research facility under a single roof in Europe. It's dedicated to understanding the fundamental biology underlying health and disease. Vivian Lee leads the team of researchers who are growing mini organs in the hope of finding new ways of fighting cancer. As we often find in Razor, a personal experience motivates her work in the field. Grandma died of bowel cancer a couple of years ago. That's one of the reasons that I want to do bowel cancer research. I think um, bowel cancer particularly, uh, if you can catch early enough, that's actually a curable disease. With 1.8 million new cases in 2018, bowel cancer is one of the most commonly occurring in the world. So our lab studies stem cell and cancer in the bowel. Um, we want to understand how exactly stem cells are maintained in the healthy guts and what happens when cancer develops. The bowel is part of the digestive system. It's made up of the small bowel and the large bowel. The surface area or lining of the bowel is covered in specialist cell types that carry out food digestion and absorption. During this process, they're damaged and continually replaced every five days. Stem cells are responsible for this renewal. They divide and generate new cells, working a bit like a conveyor belt from the bottom of the crypt to push the older cells up. The stem cells are regulated by a growth-promoting signal called a Wnt signal. 80% of bowel cancer is caused by hyperactivation of the Wnt signal, leading to uncontrolled stem cell expansion and tumour growth. One of the research tools we use in the lab is called organoids. So they're essentially stem cells growing three-dimensionally in a dish, which form this little cluster of cells that actually highly resemble the structure and function of the actual organ in the body. Creating these organoids or mini-organs is fundamental for Vivian's team. Their research is at its early stages, so most of it uses animal subjects. The first stage of growing an organoid is to source the right stem cells, in this case, from mice. Right. So right. it's like a sausage yeah. <laughs> before it's cut up into... Exactly. So this is the whole gut from the small bowel to large bowel, and we don't need that much tissue to make mini organs, so we can just take a, a small piece. And what are you interested in? What's the essential parts for your research? So the cells, this is a gut tube, so inside is um, empty tube lumen, and we're interested in the cells covering the um, internal part of the gut. She's going to clean it up first. So she's opening the gut tube now, and we're getting into the cells that we're interested in. You are doing that so that you can grow them further? In exactly, the and then okay. you can maintain them in culture, and it's like a great model just to study a lot of things. After the mouse gut is dissected into small pieces, they're added to a special solution to detach the stem cells. They're then collected by spinning them in a centrifuge before being added to a collagen-based gel. They are then taken to an incubator to grow into mini guts. So what's she doing here then? Um, so usually you need to give them nutrients to grow. So essentially Claudia is feeding the stem cells. Exactly. They multiply at a similar rate as they do in the gut, and after two days they've doubled in size. There are hundreds of tiny organoids in each dish. These are mouse mini guts, and that's where the stem cells locate, like scatter around everywhere. And is it a problem that you're looking at mice cells? I mean, how similar are they to human cells? They're very similar in terms of the molecular biology behind. So the signals regulating these cells are the same in both mouse and human. So very often, uh, for example, the, the gene mutation that happened in human bowel cancer, we can model them, put them in the mouse mini guts, and they will do the same thing. They will turn into tumor as well. 
Once they've grown into complete mini organs, cancer-causing mutations can be introduced using gene editing. These disease organoids can then be used to model bowel cancer and predict drug responses. For example, we can show one of the mouse tumor organoids, and basically they have the activation of the wind pathway that we study in the lab. Oh, they look very different. So they are basically a bit more sphere, um, like a... Bubbles. Uh, and bubble, looks like a bubble, empty cyst in the middle. Once we've seen how mouse organoids are grown, and in much the same way, organoids can be created from human stem cells. These have a number of research uses, including drug screening and for developing personalised cancer treatments for patients. So we can use these mini organs for drug screening. There we can add the drug directly to the well and we can check after a few days under microscope to see whether they're turning back to the normal shape or they're actually dying. Sometimes you can cure the cancer cell as well. Cancer differs from person to person meaning chemotherapy or radiation therapy that works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another. So screening is desperately needed to find the best drug for individual patients. So the beauty of this mini organ is that we can actually grow and expand them unlimitedly in the lab. And because of that, we can easily expand to a large scale and screen for all the drugs that are available in the clinic and see which one responds to the patient. In the future, this could be a huge development for people undergoing cancer treatment, as it means a patient can go into therapy knowing the best possible drug or treatment is being used to treat their individual cancer. This will be vital in saving millions of lives in years to come. So much science and tech in that story. And if you want more of that, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.